We begin with this Eyewitness News investigation into squatters that has attracted international attention. You don't know the law. Yeah, there's laws. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house. Yes, you are. Our cameras capturing that standoff between an accused squatter and a homeowner last month. The video went viral. It even caught the attention of the Queens District Attorney who decided to take legal action. Investigative reporter Dan Krauth breaking the big story and here now with a development that happened late last week. So what's up now? Well, the Queens DA watched our investigation and launched an investigation of her own, which pretty much flipped the script on the story. In our original story, it was the homeowner who was arrested and taken away in handcuffs for protecting her own home. This time, the accused squatter was in handcuffs, appearing before a judge in court. Brian, anything to say about what happened today? Accused squatter Brian Rodriguez walked out of the courtroom with his head and eyes covered. But he wasn't camera shy last month when our cameras were rolling during a standoff he had with the homeowner. Adele Andaloro says Rodriguez moved into the Queen's house she inherited in the middle of the night and refused to leave. So Adele, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For what? For being, in for, being house, in my, for being in my own home. Police arrested her for changing the locks on her own home, something you can't do if someone claims to live there for 30 days. They later dropped the charges, and the Queen's DA started investigating after seeing for herself what happened. We have the benefit of time, right? We're lawyers, we're not police officers. In the courtroom, prosecutors charged Rodriguez with burglary, grand larceny, and possession of stolen property. His attorney told the judge he's the victim, claiming he signed a bogus lease with an unnamed real estate broker. When we asked him for a copy of that lease last month, he wouldn't show it. Show us the proof. But who are you for me to show? I showed it to cops. Dan with Channel 7 News. If you don't want to show it, you don't I'll want show to show you it. Fool. Come here, brother. I like that. I, I, would, I would like to see it. He pulled up a document. It wasn't a lease. This, this is a bill. Is and after court, we asked again. Where's the lease? Do you have the lease or the paperwork sir, that he claims he had? Sir, a disgrace. That was his attorney's response. His client faces up to 15 years in prison if convicted. You can't walk into a house that's not yours and claim you have a right to be there. I thank the media for all the attention that they have given uh, to this story um, and for being here today because I do think it's an important message to send. Rodriguez is now wearing an ankle monitor and a judge ordered him not to have any contact with the homeowner or the home itself that's in question. But Mike, here's the problem. Yeah. The house is still not empty. Prosecutors say he was renting rooms in the house out to other people to make money. So we actually don't know what's going to happen with the people inside the home. They're either going to leave or the homeowner might have to take them to housing court to try to get them evicted. That is so frustrating. Just when you have one victory, more challenges to come. So what does happen next? Well, he's going to be in court again next month and this could be a long process. He is facing up to 15 years behind bars, so we'll have to wait to see what happens. Now, you first brought us a story on Mornings at 10, actually, on Eyewitness News about this family that inherited this home. It's like a $2 million home, and then they were trying to fight because somebody was squatting in their home. Update us on that original investigation dealing with squatters. Yeah, that's the investigation that launched all of this like two months ago. The Landa family thought they were going to court last week for a resolution of the case. Instead, they were faced with more delays. So you, you take a look at this home right here. You probably remember it. The Douglas and Queens home that they purchased for $2 million back in October and they still haven't been able to move in. The caretaker right there, the former of the former owner Brett Flores, he refuses to leave. He says he has a license to be there from the previous owner who died. Now last week in court after a half dozen other hearings, Flores added a new attorney to his team. Also there's now a new a judge signed to the case, so that's another delay. And now Flores' attorneys are considering a possible trial by jury. His attorney telling us the land has agreed to pay him $140,000 to help with the sale of the home and Flores says he needs the money. Mr. Flores, why won't you just move out? It seems pretty simple. My lawyers are speaking on my behalf. He needs the money to procure adequate housing for his family, and once he gets that money, there's nothing more he wants to do than leave. Uh, uh. The Landis told me right off the bat that they did offer him tens of thousands of dollars after months of court delays to try to, you know, get rid of this problem, and he refused the money, saying that he wanted more. So it seems like it's not just about the money here. He's trying to draw this out as long as possible. It's hard to get inside his head, but I've heard of numerous squatting cases or cases like this in the tri-state area where the homeowners paid off the person living there just to not have to deal with the court process. Well, let's talk about all the other cases because this really sparked action not only from the district attorney in Queens, but also at the state legislature level as well. We talked about this proposal for a law to prevent, close some of these loopholes. Since then, there have been others added to the effort. What do we know about this? Yeah, after our reports, four laws have been 
filed by four different lawmakers. Three of those are state laws. They would change the way that the state operates when it comes to if you have a squatter case. So it would allow police to remove the squatters instead of having to go through housing court. Those are still facing some delays because right now they're focusing on the budget. So we'll wait to see what happens with those. Meanwhile, there's a city council bill that has been filed or is about to be filed that would allow police to categorize and count how many times this is happening so we know how big of a problem this potentially is. Yeah, Mayor Adams has spoken out about this. Yes, he's actually spoke out in favor of it, saying we have to do something to protect small property owners. H have a listen. A woman's uh, home is her castle. And I think it's imperative that we continue to protect that. There was a reason that squatter laws were put in place. And, you know, I think people are starting to exploit what some of those reasons are. And I always get concerned, you know, your largest investment is your home. That's your largest investment. We have to get rid of the 30-day rule. The 30-day rule is insane. 30-day rule is where it's at because once someone says they've been there for 30 days, you can't change the locks on them, you can't turn off the utilities, and you can't remove the belongings, or you could be arrested. That's the situation we're faced with today. Yeah, so frustrating. I know you are still fielding people reaching out to you, messages and calls and all of that. Just, we have about 30, 45 seconds left. Remind people, if they're in a situation where they're owning a piece of property, they expect to be away from that property for maybe those 30 days. What can people do right now to prevent something like this from happening to them? Cameras, cameras, cameras. They say have a surveillance camera. If you spot someone in your home, get them out within 24 hours with a timestamp on your camera showing police, hey, they just got here four hours ago to show that they haven't been squatting for more than 30 days. So police can remove them as a trespasser and not have to deal with a squatting situation that would then be turned over to housing court, which could take years to get someone out. So frustrating. Hopefully your stories will spark this change that is much needed and all of those reports right now, ABC7 and Y. Dan, thank you. Thank you for having me.